There are constant debates going on on the virtues of mixing in the box versus mixing out of the box. Mixing in the box is incredibly convenient, allowing you to duplicate many plugins and spread them across different channels to be able to do a recall in a matter of seconds. But mixing out of the box allows you to interface with outboard gear more conveniently. So if you have a favorite vintage compressor, EQ, or a reverb unit, incorporating that can be easier with an analog or digital console. But what we want to do is to allow you to access your favorite outboard gear effectively inside of your Cubase mixer experience. So let's go ahead and listen to a little bit of drums dry. And what we want to do is to add an external effect. So I have a reverb unit. So I'm going to go to my VST connections. We're going to click on the external effects tab and I want to click on add external effects. So I had a friend recently give me a lexicon MPX 500. So what we want to do is we're going to define it as stereo in stereo out. We're going to actually connect it to our audio interface that Cubase is using. So you may want to have an audio interface that has enough inputs and outputs to connect all of your external processing gear that you want to use at that moment in time. So I'm going to define my inputs on my interface here and my outputs. So we'll just define our connections for us directly here. So this is where my Lexicon MPX 500 is patched into. I'm going to right click and add an effects channel track. Our external effects will show up under the external plugins family. And I can see my Lexicon MPX 500 listed there. I'm going to hit add track. And now we get this little pop-up window. And this is very critical because we could set the amount of gain that's going out to the hardware and the return gain. But there's a little button that's very inconspicuous that's incredibly important. Now, a lot of programs, when they go to use external processing, just simply send out the signal and do the loopback. But it's actually out of time because it's not doing any compensation for latency. So this little button will actually allow you to ping the signal path to determine the latency and then... Cubase will automatically compensate. So at this point, let's go ahead and just ping the system. So you hear that's 1.61 milliseconds for that path. So I have my drums kind of spread out across different outputs here. So my kick and snare, my room mics. I'm going to go directly to my sends. Let's select all my channels of my drums, hold down the shift key, and I'm gonna go to the sends, and I'm gonna hold down my alt plus shift key to enable quick mode, and I'm gonna turn on my effect send for all the different tracks. So we're going to, at this point, go to my snare and add more of the reverb. And this is going out to my external processor. So let's say less of the reverb in my kick. I want more in the overheads or the room mics. So if we mute, our external effects return channel. We hear dry. And now, and at this point, if I wanted to apply EQ to my hardware reverb, we get treated just like a normal software effect plugin. And what's even best is I could select the event and let's say I go to render in place we can go to the render settings 
And this area, I can choose my complete signal path. And I, even though it's going out to the real world, we could do a real-time export or real-time rendering. When we go to playback our audio file, it's been incorporated with the reverb. So whether you're working with drums or vocal, your outboard gear could be incorporated with true delay compensation and the flexibility of working in the box in the software environment, but still having access to your favorite outboard gear. If you have found this video helpful, please feel free to like the video and to subscribe to the channel.